Hey everybody. On the last video, we were exploring the Seymour Arm. We traveled the hour and 20 minutes from our home base in Camels, BC, past Magna Bay where we normally go, and headed down the very, very bumpy road heading towards Silver Beach, BC. On our way to Silver Beach, BC, we stopped at the Albus Falls. The falls are very beautiful. Unfortunately, this time of year, there isn't a lot of water running, but I can imagine this spring, it'd be just incredible. We also talked about the, all the unfortunate deaths that have happened at the falls because of people trying to swim or really push Mother Nature's boundaries. After that, we explored around the Albus Provincial Campsite, showing all the campsites and what it has to offer. On this episode, we'll be heading to Silver Beach, BC, again down the very, very bumpy road, and explore that area. DJ, can you please roll that intro? Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. So on today's adventures, we're leaving the beautiful and stunning Albus Falls and Albus Provincial Park, and we're heading down the road about 40 to 50 kilometers over the washboard, terrible, terrible road to the town of Silver Beach, BC, located in Sil Seymour Arm, BC. This area has quite the history, and I really wanted to review this history prior to getting there with you. So let's get this adventure started and head down these terrible roads and go to the Mexico of the Shushua. I just need you guys to do something before watching this. Shh! Don't tell anybody where this is. Hey guys, so that's Albus Provincial and yeah, I still think it's probably about 30 sites. I could be wrong. I'll put it up in the blue blue button down below once I do the research. But we're just heading out of here and we're heading into Silver Beach. So this is the area that I was telling you about that does not have power. Ugh. See the camera? Um, does not have power and there's a generator that comes on once a day for the store to charge. So it's it's really nice area, but it's definitely more remote. So it's probably about, I don't know, 10 minutes down the road. We will time lapse it and get to Silver Beach. So from Albus Provincial, we traveled to the main gravel road, backtracked a little bit, and then headed down the road heading into Silver Beach, located in Seymour Arm. Now it's saying 15 kilometers and 22 minutes, but it probably took us at least an hour because there's a lot of washboards. Maybe they rated it on a day where it's super smooth, but unless you're going Baja or in side-by-sides, you're not going to be able to do that. As you can see, the road getting out of Albus is super tight. Kind of one car access at places. I still love this road as the trees are covered. It's just so magical going down through the... seems like rainforest, but it's not. It's almost like a tunnel through the trees. It's just so cool. Well, hey there, guys. So we're driving along on the way to Silver Beach. Middle of nowhere, probably 30 clicks on the maybe more on the dirt road and who we see in the middle of nowhere a phone booth and and right next to it if you guys can see in the tree there's a mailbox Ken's you want to check if there's any mail in the mailbox oh so apparently you, you get your newspaper and then a phone in the middle of nowhere. I 
Nobody's home, obviously. I don't know the things you see in nature. But just on a whim, I decided to post on the Facebook page for Seymour Arms to see if I could find some more information about the phone booth. And boy, did I uncover a funny story. I guess the locals just put it there as a joke as the last place you get cell signal. And then someone stuck the satellite dish on top of it and then put the mailbox by. It's not even hooked up or anything, but it's kind of a local joke. People have even got their wedding picture taken next to it. It's a local celebrity with a joke attached to it. I think it's just so great and really tells the community story and the way their sense of humor is out there. As many of you know, I love history. So let's just dive into the history of this area. Seymour Arm holds the unique distinction of being the only community in the Shushwap and perhaps the entire province that became a ghost town twice. In 1865, Ogden, Ogden City, which was what the city was called back then, became the location of the bustling community serving travelers to the Big Bend Gold Rush on the Columbia. With a po peak population of 5,000 residents and visitors, Ogden City had 13 stores, 11 shoemakers, 8 wash houses and 1 bathhouse, 6 barber shops, six physicians, which is more than most cities these days, six saloons, five bakeries, three restaurants, two blacksmiths, and a drugstore. Unfortunately, the success of the town was short-lived as it was destroyed by a huge fire in the 1960s. I tried to find some more information on the fire, but of course I couldn't find anything. A little while later, in 1910, English developers rebuilt the town complete with a post office, school, and hotel, and rebranded it Seymour Arm. The developers attempted to promote the area to the settlers, primarily coming from England. They boasted a potential of the area for growing fruit and vegetables. The area was ideal for growing fruits and vegetables because of the ideal weather and soil conditions. The developers sold five acre parcels of land for $125 for fruit land, and $100 for gardens. Within one year, Seymour Arm had a population of 200, making it the largest community after Salmon Arm. Reality began to strike in the 1914 and 16s when many settlers left to go to World War I, leaving their families behind to suffer the financial ruins. Adding to the issues, in 1916, a severe frost hit, killing most of the fruit trees. As a result, the developers declared bankruptcy and most of the sellers were forced to leave and most of the land reverted to Crown for lack of taxes paid. Some other local residents tried their hand at mining during the 1920s at the Colton Mine, which is about 18 miles northeast of Seymour Arm. The ore contained high grade lead, zinc and silver. All equipment used for the mine was carried via horseback in, which proved to be uneconomical because of the treacherous route and time cost to get there. The mine closed shortly into the 1925s and totally sits abandoned and undeveloped today. Again, the, Se the city of Seymour Arm found itself in financial problems again. The hotel closed in 1925 and by 1940 the town was largely abandoned except for a few remaining settlers. Some other things to note from the Seymour Arm area. During the booming of the fruit growing bonanza, a young artist Charles Collings immigrated from England to the area with his wife and two boys. Charles Colling was one of British Columbia's earliest and most successful and highly sought after artist, yet his paintings were sold almost exclusively in England and remains almost unknown in the British Columbia itself for the most of his life. He developed a unique method of watercoloring paintings that remains as distinctive and appealing as it was in his time. The new technique was actually quite simple, although it didn't seem to be known to the public. According to one source, Collings would paint a watercolor and then sandwich it between two panes of glass 
while the painting was still wet. He would leave the painting between the layers of glass for a period of time, then remove the painting and it would dry. The results of this process was magical emerging and defocusing of the colors and shapes. Today, many consider John Colling's watercolor paintings of the same quality as famed artist Emily Carr. Today, the Collings paintings are in museums and sought after around the world. The Collings estate still stands in Seymour Arm. I was hoping to get a tour of it for this video as it's been for sale since 2016, but couldn't just make the arrangements in time. Maybe I'll get back in the spring and see if the owner's up to videoing it for us. Hey guys, well, welcome to Silver Beach, BC. So you can see that quads are a transportation around here. <laughs> Side by sides, quads everywhere. This is the provincial end where the girls are gonna go swimming. And I'm gonna drive you guys around and show you what Silver Beach is all about. And I'll show you the pub that gets power once a day and go from there so we gotta inflate their um, paddleboard and we're gonna use the EcoFlow River 2 Pro so we'll see what that's like I'm curious how much watts it's gonna pull and how quick it's gonna blow it up but we'll find out yep. that's what the paddleboard looks like and we'll blow it up so completely not sponsored or anything like that my wife actually bought it for my birthday, but this is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, five, 512 watt hours. So, we'll see how it does blowing this up. The only bad thing and good thing about this, guys, is the, um, the whole thing runs off an app. So, I'll put it up on the screen here, but... It's a, it's a really good, really good app, but that's how you turn the power on to each one of the, the outlets. So, again, it's not sponsored at all. It's, we bought this with our own money, but it's just, I think it's a pretty cool thing. It should be ready to go. So it'll tell you how many watts it's going to pull when, when it starts blowing it up. Kenzie can plug it in. So we've been using it a lot um, for running the little, we've got a little 12 volt fridge. So it's nice. It switches between the car charging it and then when we stop, it flips into keep the fridge running mode. It's really cool. That's what the paddle board looks like, and I'll show you how many watts it pulls. Should be ready to go. So just to show you guys there, there's the app. I'll, I'll blow it up on the screen later so I'll show you guys what it looks like. But we started out with 99 hours. I think it was at 65%. So we'll see what it does. How much watts it pulls. And there's the output there. So there it's coming on board. So as Kenzie sets the air pressure. Really? <laughs> the world's worst terrible commercial? It won't power it. 
So we'll find out what the car does. I'll show you there's nothing wrong with the pump. So I gotta say, I, when I got home, I looked up the specs for the EcoFlow and then for the specs for the pump, and I was asking too so much for to it out of the 12-volt outlet. If I would have done the adapter and just gone out of the AC plug, it would have worked. But I didn't know at the time. Like I said, I just got this thing, so... It's limitations, and, you know, I didn't buy a top-the-line one, unfortunately, so i got to deal with what it can do. It sure is handy, charging cameras, etc. Well, guys, real life, I showed you, it's not sponsored or anything, but we wanted to use it. This is why we wanted to use it. So, we've got the pump on Amazon, so look how many watts it pulls, but obviously it was too much for the EcoFlow. Great commercial EcoFlow. So I'm going to take you around in my wife's car here. Um, just didn't want to put Lieutenant back together, so we're going to go look around. The girls just went to go swimming, and I'm going to go swimming later with them. So I'm driving my wife's car, but it doesn't have hand controls, so I just put my spinner knob on the steering wheel. There you go. And just going to use my left foot to drive, so here we go. Okay, so the first step we'll do is take a gander through the provincial campsite here. You can see that it's it's a parking lot style, so you all back in and then you tent behind the trailers. But there's definitely a couple spots open. Of course, like I said, there's no there's no power in Silver Beach, so it's completely off-grid. No sewer or anything like that, so no hookups at all. So you kind of rely on solar, and you'll see lots of solar in the community here. Lots of tents. I mean, today in my wife's car, it's saying 25 degrees, so it's not terrible outside, but in a tent, it'd still be cooking pretty good. RVs and was there probably 25 sites, give or take? Oh, I just got my first breathe of, of smoke since the fire bed. It's amazing. Seems kind of busy on a long weekend here, but that's kind of expected. like there's more dune buggies and dirt bikes than there is actual vehicles look at this one guys how cool is that <laughs> a sand rail that is so cool and it probably has a Volkswagen engine it's so cool oh there's another side by side Look at that, Jeep, Jeep Suzuki, that's so cool. <laughs> Missed the gear, it's okay. <laughs> Every second vehicle is a quad or a dirt bike or that's pretty cool. You can see that to live in this community, you've got to have a boat. <laughs> and that's the baseball diamond. So I think by the by those wind socks up there, I can zoom up to it. That's where the helicopter lands if you have medical problems because it's way too long to drive out here. Oh, another quad. How old do you think this boy is? 10? <laughs> He's living his best life. So there's a whole bunch of streets that just link up to this area. And that's all it is, is one big flat area. But because of its location, 
being in the shoe swap here it's it's kind of ideal but there's no power so that's kind of kept a the prices down b kept people out okay so we'll go down a little bit farther but yeah this entire area is no cell service and no power i imagine the groundwater is pretty good here being this close to the lake so water's not a problem but look at these monster cell panel or the solar panel sorry that's what keeping the places alive which is so cool the technology's come this far and then with starlink you have internet and gives you a phone and everything so it's kind of the best of all things Now the other flaw of this area is, of course, the winter. I mean, the North Shoe Schwab, they get a lot of snow back here, so getting in here in the winter is pretty much non-existent. Right, we'll go down this one. Let's go down this one. I don't think this road's plowed in the winter, but you never know if it's plowed just for an emergency exit for the, the people in North Shoe Schwab. I don't know, I love the area, I love the remoteness, but then the drive-in would drive me nuts. But, you know, with Starlink and everything else, you're, you're not really stranded that much. You can see everywhere there's Starlink. So I think it's Starlink or, um, Trying to think of the name of the other internet provider. It's a TELUS based internet provider. Cascon? Mas Mascon is the other internet provider out here, which is a TELUS based thing. So a lot of people go Starlink just because it's more reliable and I hate to say it, it's becoming cheaper. So Elon's kind of got the world by its tail. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but off the, um, the drone footage from Rudy, sorry, what the lens? Um, all the the sand is white so it's almost like Mexico it's really really cool and of course because being the shoe swap it's really good water it is the end of the the arm so this is called the Seymour arm of the shoe swap I don't know, comment down below you, you smart people tell me why there's white sand here and not in other places I know there's people that watch my blogs from the shoe swap so they might know but I don't I honestly have no idea just enjoying nature and loving seeing it out here and again <laughs> quad truck it's like every second vehicle is a quad or a truck <laughs> it's so cool to see that and the other cool thing is it's kids kids laughing having good time smiling just you know living their best life which is so cool to see you know especially in this day and age where there's so much video games and everything else out there that these kids can get out and just get on a quad and just rip around and it's safe enough community that you don't really worry about them but so here's the downtown section of silver beach everything <laughs> you can see there's more quads everywhere everywhere you look that's the way to get around quads dirt bikes or golf carts so I'm smoking hot I'm gonna go for a swim now hey guys so well, I'm gonna take you down to the beach now Make sure that, that shows what the roads like it's a dusty one <laughs> and again more quads to get around What is there probably maybe 20 cars in the parking lot and one two three four five of them are dirt bikes or quads <laughs> it's just crazy it's so cool oh look at that old that one that's a beautiful bike the scrambler triumph scrambler oh beautiful it's good it's kind of an enduro setup so that's so cool 
so anyways we're gonna go down to the provincial beach here where the girls are with the the um paddleboard sorry lack of english and we'll see what's going on nice can on commander honda funny story if you ever want to do a battery on these get ready for a fight it's the most terriblest job in history so they got some handicapped washrooms that's nice some park benches down which are really cool of course your washrooms this is a really cool program they've got in the shoe swap here the lona life jacket so if kids don't have life jackets they can borrow one here which is really really cool so let's go down there and see what's going on nature left me a nice seat to sit down and take my shoe off nice and that's not a fart that's air just coming out of my socket Ugh. pop it off you don't need to tie the laces when you're a prosthetic and get this one off one two and let's go for a swim okay got my coffee for the afternoon energy Time. There's the girls way out there. We'll take a walk out there. Z plus W. Isn't that cool? That's what summer's about, you know? Look at the white sand everywhere, as far as you can see. And it just continues on going that way. It's, it's the Mexico of the Shushwab. Now, I went through this before, but I can't go in straight because the waves want to break my leg. So they want me to fall. But look at how little clear it is, guys. Okay, go the dunk there, guys. What? Yeah. Lori. Okay, face plant. Oh, that's not yeah. the glasses? <laughs> what do you think the water temperature is? It's fairly warm. I don't know, 20s? I could be wrong, but it's warm. It's almost so warm that it doesn't cool you down. That's what it looks like from the lake. There we go. This is incredible. And for this beach to be open like this, like not full at all, it's because of that 45 minute drive. I'll put you guys up on the paddleboard. I had to stop and see it one more time. It's so cool. Suzuki SJ6. It's so cool. And that's the name of the pub there, Wheelhouse Pub. That's basically the, the the community store, if you will. Kind of everything, and they get power once a day. So yes, you can launch your boat. It looks like it's ten dollars to launch your boat, eighty dollars annually, which isn't actually that bad. Community commitment. So the this wharf here has been upgraded. So we'll take a walk down the wharf. You can see that that's the white sand that I'm talking about. It's everywhere. It's pretty incredible. And over there in front of the um, pub, it's the same thing. Where else can you go to that's got sand like that that's natural? It's not, it's not man-made, it's not anything. So this here is the kind of the public use area 
and not the um, provincial area. So I imagine down here there's more drinking and dogs and everything else. But just everybody just enjoying. See all the boats pulled up to the beach. And it feels like the ocean the way the water's rolling up here. so incredible so that's where we're dangling with there that's that's one of the beaches there and then this is the boat launch and then obviously the wharf where you can come in and go up to the pub and have some drinks maybe and then there's the sand and the other beaches so pretty cool so I think that's it for me guys thank you so much for going on this journey to the Seymour Arm of the North Shushwap or Shushwap Lake. Um, so we visited Elvis Provincial where the falls were and then we continued on to here to Silver Beach and we checked it out down here. If you guys are ever in the Shushwap, I encourage you to drive down here. It is, the road does suck and it takes a while to get down here but you can see it's well worth your time getting down here just being able to see this. So I appreciate everybody for subscribing to my channel. I can't tell you how it makes me feel seeing the people watching the videos and appreciating what I'm doing and commenting on it. So thank you so much and we'll catch you on the next one.